What kind of Christians are we? We want the world's way of victory. No. You got 5,000 people? No, you're not going to get 5,000 loaves of bread. You're going to get two loaves, five fish. The world needs 5,000 loaves. You get two, five. Where has the church gone? He is not changing. He's God. Amen. So you have to ask your fear. Where'd you come from? The Bible says, be not afraid of sudden fear. See, and listen to me. I learned the hard way. Listen, when I was afraid, when my house was under foreclosure, I didn't have a job and I didn't have no food. Fear was my friend and I didn't know it. I used fear as my comfort. Repo, what they call them, not repo man. What they come, they come and they take your house. What they call that people? The sheriff. I'll peek out my thing, no car. Okay, I'm going out to church. Man, when they finally put that sheriff's notice on my door, I was free at last. See, because you know what? Up until that point, it was my fear that the note was coming. Finally, when it came, I confronted it. And I never became afraid again. You don't know what your fear is dictating in your life. God's trying to make you his representative and you're letting fear keep you as Satan's pawn. So what, you're ugly and she is not? <laughs> Just get in the spirit and tell God to blind her eyes. And keep them blind throughout the rest of the marriage. <laughs> I'm afraid she's going to reject me. Of course she's going to reject you. <laughs> but when you go up there with something that she can't resist. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Lamont. Lamont got, Naima preaching in my message. <laughs> Naima about to say, never man speak like Lamont to me. <laughs> It's good to sit on the front. So when you're, when you're trying to receive your inheritance, you have an inheritance. Whether it manifests or not, it's based on you dealing with fear. And how do you know you have fear? You complain. Complaint is the song of the fearful. I don't have enough to eat. I'm sick and tired of just eating chicken every day. What you afraid of eating chicken for? You afraid your friend's going to come and laugh at your chicken? Abraham went out not knowing, and so did the children of Israel. The difference is that Abraham went out not knowing, but went out with faith. The children of Israel started out with faith because God was there to tell them we're coming out. We all started in faith. Where are you, your first bump in the road? How about your second bump in the road? How about your third bump in the road? Come on. God's not pleased when we show lack of faith. And I want to, I'm not screaming at you, I want you to get this point really quick. The ability to complain is the absence of God's presence in your life. If the Bible says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I believe this. It says God destroyed them for murmuring and complaining. And you read it because it said he did that for our admonition so that we won't do it. Amen. So if we do it, we don't know what he has to do for us to undo it. Wow. You, how many people here say, and don't, don't be ashamed to lift your hands. You might not do it what I'm going to say though. How many of you are saved and you realize that you still had a quick draw? Somebody touched you the wrong way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> or they said something to you say, your mother, oh no. <laughs> right? There's been times when there's been a quick draw. Right? Because God needs us to know what we're capable of 
in order for us to get delivered. Uh, I didn't know that was in me. I use myself as an example. A lot of people, they, they didn't intentionally lie to me, but they lie. Oh, pastor, whatever you need, please just feel free to ask me. Okay, I call. I, I, I see uh, their phone. I see them. They're looking at my number. <laughs> I just, I came to church just now. And when I, you know, somebody was driving. And they came into the church. And I said, you shouldn't drive because you don't know how to park. And they said, how do you know? I said, my eyes are always on you. They looked at their father. They said, how do you know? And their father was like, I don't know how you know. If I could see you, God could see you. When are we actually going to enter into a promised land? When we know God sees. I got notes, but I ain't going to do them today. Okay, here we go. Help me, Jesus. He will. He will help me if I ask. Right? Now, anybody ever heard the story of the children of Israel? I'm just going to do this because I don't have that much time. You know, they start out murmuring and complaining. How many know God is long-suffering? Say this when we say, love suffers and is kind. That's when you know, see, some of you think you have love. You have a little bit of it. Even though he's giving it all to you, it's like this. Um, God, forgive me. It's going to be, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be nice. No, no, it's going to, all right, I'll do it. She said do it. You, you ever eat wrong food? You got to go to the bathroom, but you only let a little out at a time. It's called gas. It was in there. It can come out, but only come out a little bit at a time. Gas. And you'll feel better when it's all out. Many of us have God's love in us, but we let a little bit out of the time. Well, I love you, George. I don't like your wife. I love you, Elder Jan, because you change your hair. But I don't like Naima hair. We let a little gas out here. <laughs> a little gas out there. Come on. And we think we have love. No, you just oozing something out. But God is long suffering. I've been saved 26 years, 18 months, and three days. No, I'm just joking. I know it's somewhere around 26 years. You think I've always walked in love? No, not for the first 25 years. <laughs> Last year, I've been good, man. I've been real good. <laughs> you talking about love. I mean, you know, anybody here married? That is the litmus test for love. You get all dressed up to get, get what do they call that thing? The wedding. I think the wedding, you should just get a videotape. Because that's, that's sometimes the first and last time you're going to see happiness. <laughs> The rest is joy. Amen. Happiness means happening. You got to go on trips to get that happiness back. But there's joy in the journey. But that wedding day, man, y'all ain't touch each other yet. <laughs> y'all wearing all white. Everybody thinking, oh, look at that. It's Snow White. <laughs> Underneath, you got Bibles with saying, God, forgive me for they, not, for they don't know what I've done. Amen. And he got verses under him. Oh, Lord, have mercy on my soul. I'm about to lie in front of all these people. Let me change it. So, so here we go. We get saved. We're happy. Oh, God, I love everybody. You be buying people breakfast and lunch. People that spit on you, especially your family members. They hate you and they be like, oh, it's all right. I love you anyhow. And then that wedding dies down, and you be like, I ain't calling my mother for nothing. <laughs> my, I ain't calling my father. What do you do for me? Six weeks into your salvation, you're back to the dog. It used to be. What happened? 
Maybe you were supposed to follow the Lord. The children of Israel comes out of Egyptian bondage, and guess what they do? And you know what? They start complaining. But it wasn't bad. Now, this is what I want to say to you. They could have just asked, but they didn't know any better. How many of you have been in the desert? You been in the desert? <laughs> Praise God. She, I don't know. She could have been in Iraq, Afghanistan. Ooh. Here they are. They're in the desert, and they run out of water. They could have went to Moses and said, yo, Mo, is there like a water fountain out here? You know, we don't want to complain, but we thirsty. But no, they say, why you ain't got no water for us? Instead of just asking for water, why we don't have no water? We have water in Egypt. God said, okay. They complain, give them some water. Got them some water. No problem. They kept going. It's hung. I'm hungry. They could have just asked Moses, Moses, hey, Mo, can we cut cut up one of these goats we got? We got a whole bunch of sheep, you know, like can we just get some like lamb chops? Can we, you know, nobody watching? We just But no, they said, Why you brought us out here? We ain't got no food. Instead of asking, they complain. And what does God do? God said, Okay, I'm gonna give you some manna from heaven. He feeds them. Then they complain about the same thing twice. That was it. No, no, no. I, t I gave you water before. You know I'll give you water. Just ask. But we want to sit around and get our committees. I don't like when Pastor Rich does this. <laughs> Since when Pastor Rich is God. Anybody ever heard of um, Momo and Mare Mare? Here's little Miriam, you know, minor business. Her brother, her little brother's the pastor of two million people. So she get a little spiritual and think, you know, God can use me too. And her, her little crazy brother Aaron said, yeah, yeah, he can use us, right? Yeah, yeah, Mary, he can use us. And the Bible says he had a problem. They started to complain about Moses as Ethiopian wife. I mean, come on, you're gonna complain about people's spouses. That's the funny thing. Anybody here married? If anybody ever complains to you about your spouse and they walk away feeling accomplished, you are a devil. That's talking about you, and because you're not one with your spouse, you accept it. Moses, before he even said anything, God said, have them come talk to me. Let me tell you this, because look, I'm going to help you with complaining. Miriam, guess what Miriam happens to her? She turns white as snow, leprosy, for complaining. You mean to tell me I can't talk? You can talk all you want, but complaining is something different. Complaining is making a decision that you have been unjustly treated by God. Especially if you, saw, if you call yourself saved. We say God, this is a little street, God's got me. But how can God's got you and you still complain? God's ain't got you. Uh, anybody have children? I have a daughter. Her name is Sydney. You know, Sydney's eight years old. And Sydney is not like any other child on the planet. I had to teach Sydney that she could still trust me as she got older. So now I come in the house, Sydney goes as far as she can to run and jump in the air and I have to catch her. I haven't dropped her yet. I'm sure if I drop her one time, she's going to be challenged to trust me. I'm not saying that I'm going to drop her again. God might have dropped one or two of you and you're afraid to trust him. Now, Pastor Rich, how can you say that? That's not scripture. Oh, yes, it is. It says, go down to the potter's house. And I saw the potter work a work on the wheel. And it was marred in the hand of the potter. And he made it again anew another. Hallelujah. Don't tell me that once you get saved, it's going to be nice. No, it's a breaking process. You're going to learn how to listen to God and some things ain't going to go your way. And you're going to still have to say, I'm not going I'm not going back. I'm going forward. 
Job got that way when everything was taken from him. He said, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Many of us, we can't even handle not being able to pay a bill. God is not fair. I'm going to steal money to pay my bill. God is not fair. Prophet, give me the money, prophet. And then we go like to praise the Lord. I believe you now, Lord. <laughs> Lord is good. <laughs> we just start stealing from people and say, God is still good. <laughs> you single, you single, and, and God says, you know, don't touch nobody till you get married, and you you jumping on everybody. Even God is good. Praise God, He forgave me. I'm just holding on till I get married. Next week, you back in the bed. You lying devil. We got to pay for that because we did it willingly. Who is it? Liz must be listening because she ain't changed my clock. I, got, I don't need no more time. I need the clothes, Liz. So when you see, when you're dealing with murmuring and complaining, I'm getting out of here because y'all looking like y'all understanding this message today. The children of Israel, they had 11 days to get to their destiny. But it took them 40 years. Now, you want to know why it took them 40 years? And I'm going to help three of y'all that are still not on, on meds. If, you know, if you're on meds, this might not help you. It took them 40 years because they complained when they got close. You can complain when you're far. Coming out of Egypt... It was far. They just came out the world. I want y'all to hear me clearly. Somebody say, I can hear you. When you just get saved, you're just coming out of Egypt. You're able to make baby mistakes. God forgave them. You wanted water the first time? I forgive you. God want you want food. Okay, I forgive you. Here's some food. They started complaining again about food, and guess what happened? God said, you want some food? I'm going to give you so much food, you're going to choke on it, and you're going to die. And he gave them so much food, while the food was in their mouth, chewing it, they started dying. Because God is not going to allow you and I to live fearful and full of complaint. 